There's a lot of carp in here, three to 400 fish. The average is probably upper 20, maybe into 30 pounds, and they go up to over 60 pounds in here. So there's a lot of big fish in here. At this time of the year, you can get away with a fair bit of bait. Now, at this time of the year in England, when loads of people have put bait in all summer and the fish are pretty full, I probably wouldn't use that much. But on a lake like this, where there's not that many anglers fishing here, it's not full every single day of the week, and there's a lot of big fish, I think they're going to get through the bait. So I've started off with three or four kilos, 15 millers and 18 millers, and I've spread them all over the area in a great big area that's basically not one spot. You know, I've not all just catapulted it on top of the float time and time and time again. Some of it's hit the trees as I've thrown it and it's dropped a bit short. Some of it's gone a bit far. You know, I put a few pounce loads of tigers out as well. And there's a big area there that's probably 20 yards deep and at least 10 yards wide. And then after I've done that, I've gone further down the bank and I've catapulted just a few boilies through the trees on the way down to that corner where you can't fish. So you imagine the fish are down in that corner, they're happy in there, there's loads of woodwork sticking out the bottom, they can't be fished for, you know, and they'll sit down there for long periods. But if you put baits into that zone, they eat one, they eat another one, they like the taste of them. Hopefully, I'm gonna draw those fish out of that zone They'll get to the area where there's more and more bait. They'll start eating more and more bait, and then boom, I'm going to get bite. So that's the way I'm going to fish down there. I'm going to try and draw the fish out of that area. Um, I'm going to fish it probably in the day more than I am the night time. I'm going to move out onto this spot for the night. So I've got two areas going. So I think it's time to get some bait in with this one now. Traditional spawning. I could go out in the boat and put it all out with the boat, and maybe later in the week I will do that. But for now, I think there's a real advantage to fishing from the bank rather than going out in the boat and going round and round and round. It's not a massive lake. I'm sure the fish know all about the boats. And I think fishing from the bank at the start is a real advantage. I've got higher tracks on both rods, 15 mil isotonic wafter on one and an 18 mil garlic wafter on the other. Um, they were both part of the high impact range when they started off and uh, I've just flooded them with goo. Normally when I start a session, I'll fish higher tracks, see what happens, and then hopefully as the week goes on, move over to more match the hatch hook baits in the hope of snaring bigger fish. But for now, it's a new lake, first night, you know, you need a couple of bites under your belt, and then you can start to relax and uh, start looking for a bigger fish. Even though I knew the fish wasn't a monster, I played it like it was. They say the hardest one to catch on any new water is the first one, and with it so close to netting, I didn't want to make any stupid mistakes. Yeah man, always good to get your first one from a new lake. I've gone through several changes already. I had an aborted take at midnight and I'm fishing running lead clips with a long tag end on the knot to the swivel. And that tag end was pushed out of the lead clip, which means something's happened at the rig end. Um, a fish has not hooked itself, pulled it around, and um, that tag end was pushed out when I wound it back in again. So I've tightened the lines up. Um, so the fish hooks itself as much against the tight line and the rod as it does against the lead. And um, that resulted in a take three hours later, about half three this morning. Rip roaring take, even though it was screwed up tight. And um, it took line, took line as I picked the rod up and cut me off. So uh, I've gutted about that, but obviously I've learned now that uh, you cannot give them any line. So I've screwed both rods up tight. Redid this rod as well. Both the bites had come on a garlic wafter. The other rod had isotonic on it and that hadn't done anything. So I've put garlic on both rods. This one was changed over and has produced the bite. Just under 21 pound, absolutely chuffed a bit. This is. 
this. Not really been in touch with it at all, really. Just sort of plodding in. Come on, turn up. Get that net. Number two. Yes, get you. Lovely. Oh, I've got those shoes on. Well, this one absolutely roared off. Feels a bit heavier than the last one. That's two on the right hand area, so baiting it last night and not fishing it. Definitely an advantage, but it's much warmer tonight. And the fish are showing a lot more all over the lake. I'm going to put two rods out on this other area now. Come on this time. Gotcha! Yes! Right, new rig, more bait, both rods on that spot. Make the most of it while it's happening. I was away again on the same rod out in open water and I instantly knew it was a better fish. It felt heavy and powerful from the word go and as it surfaced close to the net, I could see it was a much bigger common. Get in that net. Yes, get in. That is a 30 pounder all day long. At that 2712, the first one of last night's trio, and uh, moving out to that spot in the centre of the lake has definitely, definitely paid dividends. And it's nice to be getting them out in open water. Still the same setup, combi rig with one of those 18 mil garlic infused wafter hook baits. Loads of bait over the top of it, and there was loads of bait in the sling. That's really, really important. You're getting them out in the morning. Um, see what's in the sling. There was loads of link in there, so he's obviously taking a preference to that. It's really good to know, and there'll be a lot more bait going out on that spot later on today. Come on, big fella. Yeah, that's a bit more like it. 39 pounds, 12 ounces. Biggest of the trio. I had a 20 pounder, nice scaly male in between these two commons and uh, it shows that the spot is rocking now. All three bites off the right hand spot and uh, I think putting the bait out 24 hours before and then rebaiting it again before I put the rods out um, is doing the trick. Still one of the garlic wafters. Um, this one on another different rig. Uh, this is straight through 25 pound boom um, onto a spinner swivel, size two curve um, and one of those D-rig kickers which um, I absolutely love and uh, it was nailed beyond belief. So that is definitely, definitely going back out there tonight. Interestingly, the sling had loads of tigers in it and um, a little bit of bait as well, a little bit of boily, but it shows this one does like tigers. So by having a mix of baits, if, as long as they're eating something and the hook bait, that's all that matters. The first bite came well before midnight and this was off of the maze spot. With two rods split on two different areas, this had to mean there was more than one take to be had tonight. Sure enough, both spots produced two takes each, and I got very little sleep. Not that I was overly worried. When the feeding spells are at night, you have to fish through the tiredness and make the most of it. This was my first bite during daylight. Proof enough that having two spots was key to getting multiple takes. I hadn't put any more bait in on this occasion. The initial big hit's enough to keep the bites coming without spawning in the dark. A valuable lesson learned for the night ahead. One, two, three, four. I think that's what you call an autumn master class. The isotonic and bonoffies were working a treat and I was convinced the pop-ups over the tight baiting was the key to snaring quicker bites. Well, how's about that? Four fish in the night, two on each rod, with this one and at 36 pounds he is absolutely lovely and uh, it's certainly working now. Bloody freezing man. That's better. Here we 
go. Mush. Like that. It's in there. The spinner rig with the isotonic pop-up had absolutely nailed this one, and the scale spun. 51, 12, 51 and a half. Result. After the success that I'd had the night before, I rebaited both spots but with much less bait. Often the anglers go big on the last night and put far too much bait in. I'm sure if I'd have done the same, I wouldn't have caught this amazing old character. Well, here he is, 51 pounds of German mirror and the perfect end to the Autumn Masterclass.